Hi everyone, so it's time for a June favourites video which is mad but on with it and I'm going to show you a perfume first and it is a perfume which I have definitely definitely shown you before, it is a repeat offender in these favourites videos but I do not apologise for that because it is my favourite perfume of all time and it is um, Lady Million by Paco Rabanne, it looks like this. I have got the tiniest tiniest amount left and I will definitely be repurchasing this, it is the nicest scent, it is so Moorish, just if you have it on your wrist you just want to keep on smelling it, it's kind of the perfect blend of like a girly scent, a slightly floral scent in there, a slightly fruity scent in there, it's just a nice kind of mix of everything, plus this one really lingers around on your skin, you don't notice that you're still wearing it but people around you do and my friend picked up on this straight away the other day, she just knew what I was wearing and it, it's so lovely that even my sister went out this week and bought a bottle of it because I've been spraying it so much this month. If you haven't had a sniff of this yet, I highly, highly recommend you do. So that's Lady Million by Paco Rabanne. The next one is a foundation and you guys will know that apart from being a lipstick whore, I am really, really into foundation and constantly on the lookout for foundation. New one, the next best thing and my favourite to date is definitely the Girl and Lingerie de Peau still. However, this one here is definitely getting a bit close and giving it a bit of a run for its money and it's the Chanel Matte Lumiere Foundation. And my shade is 40 Beige Intensity 2.0. I've got it on today and to be quite honest with you, I've been wearing it practically every day this month since I've got it. It is lovely. I'm getting a real kind of love affair with Chanel foundations at the moment. Every single one that I've tried I have loved, apart from Pro Lumiere because it was too greasy for me. Um, but this one, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It says it gives a matte yet luminous finish, and that's exactly what it gives. It's not ridiculously oil controlling, it's not going to make you look powdery or cakey, it just gives you a really natural kind of skin-like finish, but it is quite full coverage, and the staying power is ridiculous on it as well. It sticks around forever. Plus, I find that I don't get a flashback face when using flash photography with, with this um, foundation, which is an amazing plus point, and it's definitely been my sort of go-to one for nights out. I normally use my MAC face and body for nights out because it doesn't contain an SPF. This does contain an SPF, but I find that it doesn't sort of get that flashback face. So I absolutely love this, and if you suffer with the same problem, this might be one to give a go. Absolutely love it. I will do a full review on my blog if you'd like to see that, so comment below if you'd like to see that. And when I apply it, I've been using two different bl um, brushes. I do apologise because these are dirty because I did use them this morning. If I want a really full coverage and it's really kind of full on, I use the Sigma Flat Top Synthetic Kabuki Brush. It looks like this. And I use this foundation brush for all my different foundations. Apart from the other brush, which I'm going to show you, this is the only one that I would use. And I highly recommend it. I think you can get hold of it in the UK. You do have to order it off the American website, but I think it's only around 14 or £15 pound with shipping, which still makes it a lot cheaper than the MAC brushes, and it is amazing. I've also been using this for my Chanel Tan de Soleil and for cream blushes as well, so it's very kind of multifunctional. So I've been loving using this for a full coverage, and when I want more of a lighter coverage, I've been using the MAC 187, which looks like this. And I just pop a few um, pumps, like two pumps is enough for my whole face, two pumps on the back of my hand, dot that over the top, stipple it all over my face and then kind of swirl it in and that gives still a really nice finish but definitely more of a lighter one, so it's more of a kind of everyday finish whereas the Sigma one gives more of kind of a nighttime finish, so the combination of those two brushes have been fantastic with that foundation, so I've really been liking those combinations. Now I do have a few blushes and I have to admit this month I have gone slightly crazy for blushes and I've really been rediscovering some old ones that I had in my collection and also buying some new ones and one of the new ones that I have bought and I have reviewed on my blog so I will pop the full review below and it is a Topshop Cream Blush in Head Over Heels and it looks like this and on camera that's a really true representation of what it looks like this is kind of the perfect blend of a pink, peach and sort of a coral all mixed together in one beautiful blush. So these are only £6. You get a decent amount of product, plus you do get a mirror as well. They're really, really cute. I love the packaging. And this is a new one from Topshop. This is one of their new colours that they've released. I've also got Neon Rose and Flush. And I do really like Flush as well, but this is just more of a kind of everyday sort of one for me, and it suits my skin tone a lot better. So it's kind of very warm, very, very pretty. Also looks nice on the lips as well, if you have a decent lip balm underneath. So. I'd highly recommend checking that one out. Another cream blush which is very, very similar, and if I put them up 
together you'll see how similar they are. And this one is MAC Something Special Cream Cream Blend Blush and this is a new purchase. And this is it against the top shot. So you can see they are quite similar and I bought them on the same day. I bought the MAC one first and then I found this one and I kind of had a oh dear do I really need both at the moment but in the, for the sake of vlogging, yes I do. So um, I picked this one up and I do really like it and I have to say I am pleased I picked both of them up because they both have completely different finishes. The Topshop one is much more of a powder kind of finish on the skin, whereas the MAC one leaves more of a dewy finish, and I really like that. This is the perfect kind of summer cheek, like it sort of leaves that sort of glow on your cheeks as well, so it's not like you need a highlighter or anything, this kind of leaves that sort of sheen on your cheeks. So I really, really like this one, definitely worth having a look at. And another one which I've been liking and that I always go back to, and it is MAC Melba. It is a matte blush, and you can kind of see it's quite similar to something special. Something Special is here, which is the cream blend one, and MAC Melba is here. Something Special is more kind of um, pinky, but um, MAC Melba is more of a peach, and it's just the nicest, nicest blush in the world. It's very matte, um, really pigmented. It builds up colour quite easily, but it just leaves a really nice kind of natural blush on the cheek. And I always rave about this, but I absolutely love it, and I always, always go back to it. So that's MAC Melba. Then I've got a few bits for the eyes, and um, you may notice that today I'm wearing eyeshadow, which I never really wear, but this month I've really been into wearing a lot of makeup. It sounds quite bizarre considering it's the summer and you normally wear less makeup, but this month I've been wearing quite a lot, and I've really been getting into eyeshadows. I really like the um, Mythology by MAC, that's one which I've been reaching for quite often. And at the moment I've got Urban Decay Toasted from the Naked Palette just all over my eye, with this eyeshadow which I'm going to show you blended in the crease, and this is just my go-to crease colour, this is the one which I always go for, and it is MAC Expresso. I've got it in one of the palettes here, just on its own. It's on its own because I usually use it for my eyebrows, but this month I just kind of fancied, I just sort of accidentally always pop some in my crease, and I just really like the look of it. It's very natural, it's a matte colour, so it doesn't add any shimmer to the crease or any of that business, it just adds a really nice subtle kind of shadow. Um, but my favourite combination with this is MAC All That Glitters, which I'm not going to show you again because I show you that in every single video I swear because I absolutely adore that eyeshadow. But the combination of all the glitters over the lid with espresso in the crease is just perfection and a really nice kind of everyday subtle look. Um, another product which I don't think I've actually shown you guys yet and it is the Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara. Comes in the tiniest, cutest tube ever. So, so small. Um, now I don't really wear, well I didn't used to wear mascara on my bottom lashes at all, but na since I've got this I wear mascara on my bottom lashes every day and I love just wearing a bit of eyeshadow underneath and then um, putting uh, mascara on your lashes on the bottom lash line. I just feel like it gives that kind of extra bit of definition and sort of makes them stand out and the applicator for this is just so tiny, it's like smaller than my nail, it is so small so precise. I've never been able to get it so kind of coat them so well, they don't clump, you don't end up with sort of, when I used to use my um, L'Oreal Telescopic on it, I'd end up with just like a massive clump of mascara on my bottom lash line, but with this you don't, it's so precise and so tiny. And I actually really enjoy using it, plus the packaging, it's just so cute, it's got little like flowers on it. But yeah, this is really nice, I think it's about £8. It does seem a bit bizarre getting a mascara just for your bottom lashes, but it is nice for kind of defining the top lash line too, and I can see me going through this so quickly. So I'll update you on how quickly I go through that. But at the moment, I'm loving it. Um, I've then got a nail polish, and I don't actually have it on my nails at the moment because I just took it off because I've been at work all day just slowly picking off my nail varnish, which is really, really nasty. So I did actually just take it off, but it is Essie Topless and Barefoot. And I heard so much about this, I kind of looked at the colour and thought, hmm, it's a bit plain really. And it is a bit plain, but that's where I like it. At the moment I'm working in the office, so I can't really go in with like bright green nails or anything. And this is kind of the perfect office wear colour. It also looks fantastic with a tan, and really, really nice on the toenails as well. I thought when I first originally got it, it was going to be more of like a nudie peach. But on the nails, I find it's almost like a dusky rose. It has a kind of undertone of pink to it, but it's actually really p pretty and really, really flattering. So I've been enjoying that. Plus, it's in a mini lo little bottle, and I have a thing for miniatures, which is just so cute. So yes, I've really been liking that one. 
And then the final product is one for hair, and I have done a review on my blog about this, so I will pop the link to that below. And it's the Batiste Dry Shampoo Big and Bouncy Extra Extra Large Volume. And this stuff gives insane volume. You can see my hair right now is as flat as a pancake, and that is because I'm going going to work tomorrow, and I've just washed it. And unfortunately, I can't go to work with massive, like, big porn star hair. But if you want that, this definitely gives it to you. I've been wearing it on nights out, after work kind of thing. It is amazing. It just gives such instant volume. No backcombing required. This is what the Umberto Giannini backcomb in a bottle wanted to be. This is it. If you're really disappointed by that product, give this one a go. I think it's 3 dollars um, but it is in a slightly bigger bottle than normal, it's in a 200ml bottle um, and it is just fantastic. If you can get your hands on this, I've, I've heard it's quite hard to get hold of apparently, my boots had quite a few of them, but if you can get your hands on this, I highly, highly recommend it, absolutely love it, I think I may be retiring my backcombing brush, shop colour, who knows. So um, that is my June favourite, thank you for watching and hopefully I will post up a tanning video soon, so see you guys soon, bye!